Hello again guys, this is part 2 on the video series of variables, so if you haven't watched part 1, please go ahead and do so, because in there we cover the basics of this new feature. In the second part we will be covering specifically how to use variables in advanced prototyping, and I will link a file in the description so you can follow along. Keep in mind that this file will only contain the designs because the whole point of this is for you to actually create and set up the variables from scratch, so without further ado, let's go! Okay guys, so let's jump right into it. So first of all, why is it important to prototype with variables? This will basically allow you to show your clients or team how your designs are intended to work in the real world with higher fidelity but less PC work. So you have to create less screens, but you can display much more uh, functionalities with this and how Figma did this was introducing two new prototyping actions the first one being set variable which will allow you to manually give a specific values to a variable you already set on your local variables also you can create operations like adding subtracting dividing or multiplying this is obviously automatic so you just have to set the logic and then it will make the calculations for you and finally you can also create those same operations not only by referencing static values but also referencing other variables. The second prototyping action Figma introduced with variables is conditionals, which basically unlocks if-else logic, which simply put is the prototype will check for some condition and then it will prompt it to perform a certain action. And obviously both the condition and the action are defined by you. Okay, so I, I think the best way for you to understand this is just creating some examples and using the prototyping functionality. If you want to follow along, the file is linked in the description. So in this example, we will be creating a card in a movie rating app in which you can click uh, either the tomato button if you dislike it or the rose button if you like the movie. So the first thing we're going to do is setting our normal prototyping component. So I'm going to take this tomato button, move it to the side, and I'm going to create a hover state for it. Let's give that a, a darker color, maybe a darker stroke. You're going to select both of the buttons and click on the drop down menu of the components icon. And you're going to create multiple components and then combine those as variants. Basically, what we're going to do is create a property name state name the first one default being the inactive state and the second one we're gonna name hover okay for now the only thing we're gonna set up is our regular uh, prototyping actions we're gonna go to the prototypes tab and then link both of these buttons by using the while hovering prompt we can give this a dissolve animation just to make it a bit smoother let's make this 150 milliseconds what i'm gonna do now is drag a copy of this component and then use this one i'm gonna copy this then select the tomato button and then Control or command shift r to replace it in there and you can see we're now using the, com the component in here okay once you're set you can actually preview your prototype um let me just drag the, a copy of this frame outside and selecting that frame you're gonna tap shift and spacebar and it will actually let you preview your prototype so you can see i got my hover effect i'm gonna make that a little more noticeable go back to our frame uh, yeah yeah I like this better okay guys and now that you have your basic prototyping uh, set up you're gonna go to local variables uh, let's create a new collection named interactions and we're gonna create a number variable named tomato counter uh, we can set this to any value for now maybe three so our next step is to actually link the numbers in our tomato button component to the variable we said which is named tomato counter so you're gonna directly select both of the numbers in the two states of the button look for the variables icon in the text panel click on apply variable and then look for your tomato counter variable and link it you're gonna see it automatically change the default value i said which was one to the value that we gave the the actual variable in the variables window and as this button is an instance of our component it obviously updated as well okay guys so until this point we've only used the basic prototyping actions which you will probably already know 
Um, but now we're gonna use the new prototyping capabilities, uh, starting with set variable. So our intention in here is to make that number increase by one every time it gets clicked. So if you think of it, this button goes to the hover state whenever my mouse is over it. So we're gonna have to apply that on click action to the hover state because anytime we click it it's obviously gonna be in the hover state right so i'm gonna have that selected go to the prototypes tab and click on the plus icon in add new interaction okay so you're gonna leave that on on click and then then click this drop down menu select set variable okay guys so the first thing is gonna ask you is what variable are we setting to something else so you're gonna click on the tomato counter because that's the variable that that number number three is linked to and then you gotta think what's the behavior you wanna get out of it. So basically what I want is having that tomato count increase by one every time somebody clicks it. So I'm gonna select again the tomato counter because that's our base number and then click on addition and type in one. So basically what I'm saying here is set my tomato counter variable to whatever that number is. So tomato counter variable plus one. Okay, now let's go to my actual prototype and let's check if this works. So, uh, the first thing, it actually works. Uh, it enters the hover state while I'm uh, mousing over it. And then if I click it, the number counter increases. So yeah, it works. Okay guys, let's jump into our next example. In this one, I'm gonna show you how conditionals work. So what I wanna do is have this card calculate the total price Based on, based on the unitary cost of each print and the amount of prints the user adds to the card. Okay, so once again, the first step is to set up your basic prototype interaction. So I'm gonna quickly create some hover states for both of these. Let's turn all these into components and group both of these and then both of these. Go to your prototype tab and then link this while hovering. Let's have the same interaction for this. Change from on click to while hovering. And then let's replace these components in our actual design. So you can actually just copy, select the place you wanna replace it, Control Shift R or Command Shift R. And do the same for the add to cart button. Okay guys, our next step we're gonna go back to our design tab, make sure we don't have anything selected and open our local variables menu, go to our interactions collection and we're gonna start to create new variables. Okay, so let's think what variables do we need to make this work? So you can either decide to left this 950 as a static value, uh, you can just simply make the calculations with, with the 950 static value, but if you were creating this for a real world application, I will actually make it a variable because the prices can change anytime in an e-commerce. So I'm going to make the unitary value of one print a variable. I'm also going to make the amount of prints added to the card a variable. And finally, I'm going to make the total price a variable also. So let's get started. Create variable number. Let's name this one Neptune, which is the name of my print price and we're gonna set this to 950 okay great let's create the next one number this one will be called neptune count which is how many prints the user adds to the cart uh, which we're gonna set this to one and finally we're gonna create our neptune total variable which we're gonna leave in zero for now because the whole point of this is make the prototype calculate it itself. Okay, the next step is to actually link the values to our variables. So a quick reminder of our first variables video is you have to separate this 950 to the dollar sign and the same in the total. And you have to do the same for any value you wanna turn into a variable. You have to separate it and basically isolate it. Okay, so we're gonna direct select that 950, locate the variables icon in the text panel, apply variable, and we're gonna make that our Neptune price, which is 950. You're gonna see it didn't change because it was already set to 950, but it is now linked 
two are Neptune price, which you can confirm by looking at the text panel again, and you're gonna see the variable linked in there. Let's do the same for our Neptune count. And finally, remember guys, this is an instance of a component. So you gotta go to the actual component and link the variable in there. So you're gonna select both the hover and the default state, apply variable, and you're gonna link that to our Neptune total. And you, got, you can see it actually changed because I had this one set to zero. Okay guys, so similar to the first example, we're gonna go to our hover state because clicking on this plus icon is what will trigger all the prototyping functionalities. So we're gonna go ahead and select that hover state, go to the prototypes tab, click on add new interaction. We're gonna leave this on on click, click the drop down menu and select the set variable functionality. So this first part will be very similar to our first example. We're gonna select the Neptune count variable and set that again to Neptune count plus one so that anytime you click in this button it's gonna add one to our neptune count okay let's check if that works um guys the reason i'm moving the frame out of the other frame is because when i try to preview this prototype it actually previews the whole frame which contains it so to make it more visible i just uh, take it out of there and isolate it okay guys so let's check everything is working as intended so let's check for the hover states first this works this works now let's check for the variable setting so if i click on this it does increase the counter so yeah everything is working fine let's set up the rest of our prototype okay guys so next up we're gonna go back to our prototype we're gonna open that interaction we already have and we're gonna click on add action and we're gonna set another variable so click on there so what we want to do now is actually create the total price calculations so we're gonna set the neptune total to neptune price times neptune count okay one last thing i'm gonna do is actually edit the neptune total variable because i figured this to, for this flow to actually activate if this was a real case scenario um there there will there will have to be at least one unit of the neptune print for this to work so let's set the base value of the neptune total to 950 you know because the default state of this card has to be with a total of 950 it can start from zero because the neptune count has to start from one okay so now that we have that set up and my base value is correct um i'm gonna check if i'm gonna check if the prototype actually calculates the value for me so yeah you can see this works when it's when we have two units it multiplies two by the cost of one unit which is 950 to get a total of 19 and it will continue to do it no matter how many units i add to my card okay great so our second example works perfectly for our final example i'm gonna demonstrate how to use the boolean functionality i'm gonna grab a copy of the card we just did and what i want to do is display a free shipping peel or text whenever the user adds four or more items to the card so i want it to automatically display once the user adds the fourth item okay so the first thing we gotta do is actually create the free shipping peel And as a quick reminder, the Boolean variables are those which you can set up either to true or false values. So I'm using that in this case because I wanna assign the visibility of the free shipping element to true or false, or basically to visible and not visible. And I wanna make that a variable. And we're gonna go once again to our local variables and create a new variable, this time a Boolean one. I'm gonna name this show free shipping we're gonna set it to false for now because our the default state of our card is having one item so you guys are starting to see we're basically following the same process every time we're setting our variables then we're gonna link our variables so that's the next step you're gonna select your free shipping pill and you're gonna locate the layer panel then you're gonna right click on the 
show or hide icon which is basically the eye icon you're gonna right click that and you're gonna link that to our boolean variable named show free shipping and you're gonna notice it disappears because our variable is set to false which is basically hide but if i turn it on you're gonna see it shows because our variable is now linked to our free shipping pill Okay, let me let me make that visible for a second and i'm gonna place it inside of my card now that our free shipping pill is placed we're gonna go ahead and make that false again okay guys so we're gonna go back to our plus button component where we have uh, our, all our interactions set and we're gonna add a new one and so remember we're trying to display that free shipping pill when the items in the card are four or more so just by hearing that you can infer that's a conditional because we're triggering a specific action once a certain condition is met so i'm gonna click this time in the plus icon but in the conditional option so the first thing this is gonna ask you is what's the condition so i'm basically gonna make if the neptune count which is the amount of items is greater than or equal to four and then you're gonna set the action which is set variable you're gonna select your boolean variable which you remember it is to toggle the visibility of our shipping pill set that to true so basically when the amount of items in the card is equal or greater than four you're gonna set the visibility of our free shipping pill to true now i'm gonna tap shift spacebar and i'm gonna check everything works so remember this art behavior is when this number reaches four or more uh it's gonna display the free shipping pill and it works yeah you see if you keep adding items it's just gonna uh remain in there because that's the condition we set okay guys so that's it as you can see this will really help you create insane prototypes that will allow you to show either your team or developers or your client uh how your designs are actually intended to work in the real world and you're not having to create a thousand screens for that uh, it will save you a lot of time and it will actually increase the fidelity of your designs please do try to recreate examples if you haven't been following along i will link the designs in the description but remember i will only link the designs not the actual complete file with the variables because the whole point of it is for you to get some practice and actually set up your own variables from scratch okay guys and that's it really thanks again for supporting the channel leave a like if you got some value out of this video and if you want to keep up with the channel remember to subscribe and see you in the next one